This presentation provides some comments on philosophy of science from the perspective of biometrics theory. The purpose of this presentation is to contextualize biometrics system theory and methodology within the philosophy of science debate and also to make a contribution to such a debate from a transdisciplinary perspective. This presentation consists of five parts. Part one deals with reductionism versus holism. They are the two worldviews that philosophy of science needs to concern itself with. Part two discusses different levels of reality, namely physical reality versus different kinds of conceptual reality, as well as consciousness reality. Part three deals with the relevance and application of the different levels of reality to change management. Part four discusses the interaction of levels of reality and part five gives some concluding remark. Let us now look at part one, reductionism versus holism and explore the differences between them. The method of reductionism is analysis. Analysis proceeds by looking into the system to get an understanding of the functioning of its various parts. This knowledge is then combined to understand the workings of the whole system. However, from the perspective of a holistic theory like general system theory, complexity theory or biometrics theory, this is only half the truth. Holistic theories claim that the functioning of the system and its parts changes in different environments. The method which explores this change is referred to as synthesis. The reductionist method of analysis is applied in the various scientific disciplines. It also guides interdisciplinary research. By comparison, the holistic method of synthesis is applied in transdisciplinary research. Transdisciplinary research is concerned with the integration of knowledge from different disciplines around a specific issue. It does so on the basis of generic principles of organization in time and space that apply to all systems. These generic principles can also be a challenge to the exploration of the assumptions on which a scientific discipline is based. The first guiding rule of reductionist research is ceteris paribus, which is Latin for other things being equal. This means that the experiments exclude a changing environment. In other words, variables in the environment are kept constant. This allows the researcher to repeat experiments in exactly the same way and to detect stable behavior in the variables that are being observed, which of course leads to predictable outcomes. By comparison, the guiding rules of holism are different. The first one is panther ray, which is Greek for everything flows or as the Greek philosopher Heraclitus observed, one cannot step into the same river twice because the water has moved on. What all that means is that everything is changing and keeps changing and that actually there is no such a thing as ceteris paribus. The second rule of holistic research is emergence. Emergence means that in the interaction of two systems, new properties or qualities arise that were not previously in those systems. For example, if two persons share knowledge with each other, new knowledge can arise and this new knowledge arose out of the interaction. This means that there exists knowledge which cannot be derived from the analysis of the interacting systems. It also means that outcomes are unpredictable because the interaction between different systems 
can be different each time and therefore the emerging knowledge will be different. I would like to insert a note on terminology about holism here. Holism spelled with a W means that we are looking at holes in the sense that all its parts are considered. While holism spelled with H refers to the fact that holes have emergent properties and are greater than the sum of its parts. The research approaches of reductionism and holism can be summarized as follows. Reductionism studies systems in increasing detail, one part and subpart at a time, by observing the behavior of that part using a few variables in isolation of numerous possible other variables that interact and impact uh, on the part. As a research outcome, this leads to an increasing understanding of complexity in ever greater detail. The research approach of holism is to study holes in interaction with their environment. In other words, to study holes within larger holes. And then to observe the change of that interaction in time and space and identify stable patterns of behavior in that interaction in both time and space. The research outcome of this is to understand the simplicity that underlies the complexity.